no, it would actually be great if I actually had that dragon hoodie that Nerdy Crafter has been selling. I bought it, but it's not gonna be here in time for this video. And I'm really, really sad about that. Hey dragons, I'm Dragon Snips, the ruler of the Dragon Kingdom, and today we're gonna be taking a look into the super not a metal crap kit by Jackie, aka Nerdy Crafter. Now, if you don't know who Nerdy Crafter is, where have you been on the internet? Nerdy Crafter is another crafter here on YouTube who does amazing um craft and like sculpting on her, on her channel but she also does reviews and look at into kit, art kits and fidget toys that, that was her second kit that you just saw earlier this is her first kit that she did last year super uh, like not another crap kit that i actually did for a youtube video where i actually customized a one of the figurines from this kit and turn it into godzilla singular points to be exact i did the first kit which is right here i had a lot of fun but yeah um instead of keeping you guys here waiting and waiting upon like my intro if you're still around if my intro is not that long let's go ahead and get to the sculpting part and the build of everything also there's a little secret surprise at the end because not only did i make two figures and did a comparison between spray kit spray can how to spray can and airbrush. I also made something else that I've been wanting to make. Seemed like a good idea. Let's go! Alright, before we get into the video, I need to remind you guys that my editing style is based on both Mariah Elizabeth and Graveyard Loon. I just wanted to let you guys know that. Anyways, before we get into the, um, uh, well, sculpturing of this video, we need to make the mold first. So I start off with getting the plastic mix first. First, I say, no mold, no nothing. So I just go ahead, measuring out my plastic here, nothing Ooh. falling out of place here. I'm, I'm not even compacting it. If I am, I'm sorry, not really. I place that plastic into the cup and went to go get water to place into the cup as well. Is anything missing here? Because I don't. I mix that plaster all together. I'm just stalling for time, guys. Here's the mold. I had it prepared ah! off of camera, so, Daddy! so don't worry, don't panic, please. It was prepared first. Anyways, I made my first mistake oh. here. I'm just gonna clean that up with that. And finally, after one hour of leaving it in the mold and half unmolded up for another hour, I hope that makes sense, here is my second mistake. Ooh. Don't worry, this isn't the only time you'll he he hear me say mistake in this video. Uh, well, the back legs of this figure was sadly broken. And this is not my first rodeo. This won't be the last time my legs break off of the thing. Whenever I make the mold of this figure, the back legs always break off. Anyways, we're getting off topic. However, with the figure, notice something missing. When I was trying to move the figure out of the mold, I did it over the trash can, and one of the legs, uh, well, let's just say it no longer with me here. So I'm just building a new leg for this guy. I kind of wish I did something different with the back leg here, because I didn't, I don't know, I put it in the same position that how, like, the, the mold originally was, but I kind of wish I did something different, but I'm not complaining and I'm not going to quibble about it, so moving on. I added where the horns and tail were going to be in the figure. No wings this time, not on this one. And then I proceeded to put clay on this guy. Now, I, I do this for some reason. Number one, I want to kind of smooth out some of the bumps that he had, and number two, to kind of keep his horns and, um, tail from moving. Also, I glued on the horn and the tail and the legs so I wanted to kind of cover them up with the clay. I ha I found it but I find that if you cover glue with clay it's not gonna bring out a really horrible smell but I guess also number one make sure what type of glue you're using first before you stick it into the oven too. I, that should also help. This one, the glue that I've been using is kind of like a super glue, but almost kind of like a resin. Not like, not resin, it's not resin. Don't stick resin in the oven, please. Don't, that's dangerous. But, I, it cures the same way as resin, but it's not resin. I think it's kind of like a type of super glue. Just check to see what type of glue it is before you stick the item into the oven. 
And, and also put clay over it first. That way it's not going to burn in the oven. Just make sure what type of glue you're using. First. So here it is. Well, here are both of them. I have a second one in my left hand. We'll deal with her later. Right now I'm gonna deal with this guy right now. Let's gather up the supplies. Nice. Need to make this part longer. Now it's time for the sculpturing. So this first round is just to cover up the figure to make sure it doesn't break off. Just making sure things are clean as uh, possible. Now it's time to really get into it. I went ahead and start building up the body of this horse. By the way, this is going to be a horse. Not just any horse, a dragon horse. But as I'm going to build up the body of said horse, one of the legs broke off. It's the back leg. Again. I decided to leave the leg off, for now at least, and just build up the body more. I eventually glued the leg back on, and then moved on from there, and just build up the body more. Now I'm not gonna bore you, or the bore you with all of me building up the body of the horse, so I'm just gonna skip ahead to where I have it halfway built up and decided that this is way too much clay. And it was so much clay. I mean, so much clay. So I decided to take some of that off to kind of build down some of uh, you know, how much I build up. By the way, if you notice, I am using a different type of clay here. I'm using polymer clay, and I am using cosplay. See here, I have a lot of polymer clay in my drawer, and I don't have a whole lot of cosplay, so I didn't want to use a whole lot of cosplay. And so I decided to use the clay that I had laying around instead of using a lot of my cosplay. And surprisingly, I still have leftover cosplay even after making two sculpture. But we're getting ahead of my help. So after I took some clay off and decided that this was a pretty good area to stop, I decided that it was time for the first bake. After the first bake went perfectly fine. The other time I baked it, it was hell on earth more on that later probably not when i mean hell on earth it was when i mean that i mean like either it cracked on me like the clay was cracking or the leg broke off it didn't matter which one think like everything else was fine like um the horns and the tail none of them broke off but the legs yeah i kind of put myself into that situation I went ahead and worked on the tail for a little bit, did a few sculpturing off camera because, you know, this is a way too long. Now it's time to work on that leg. Remember that leg that I fell into the trash and I could not recover? Well, I decided to turn it into a robot leg. Why not? Maybe the big dragon horses are way more intelligent than we think. Not only did I do this one, I did two! Insanity is going up now. So I'm pretty much um, almost done. I, I went ahead and added the details for the horns, tail, and a few more details on the back and stuff. But I'm not going to show you all of my problem in the video because I really want to get to the parts that I really, really want to get into. The airbrush versus the spray can. Now, I think I mentioned it in the intro, but I um, saw this video where Jazza compared an expensive airbrush with Jackie airbrush, and I kind of wanted to do that myself, but I don't have the money for an expensive airbrush, and I don't really know how to use an airbrush, so I went with the one thing that I know the best, spray can. So I went ahead and primed this guy only with two coats because... You really don't need to prime them, you could just put the spray paint on, but I don't know, maybe I just wanted to try it out to see how it worked. So, so while I am priming him, you can, the spray cans are cheaper and they are affordable, but they're also dangerous, which is why you um, spray paint outside. But when I was actually spray painting it, I had to do this indoors because it was cold. I had the window open, the cats were out of the bedroom, I had the door closed, fan was circulating the wind out so that way I'm not breathing uh, this stuff in. And I was wearing my respiratory ma mask. Always wear a respiratory mask when you are handling it with spray paint. This is the only downside to spray paint. Also, they can explode if you're not careful enough. So after I added a black base onto him, I really did not need to prime him, but did no, did no hurt, like it doesn't hurt to prime them first. 
So I wanted to add pink to him, but the pink color that I had wasn't working for me. So I so I scrapped the pink idea and went with a purple color. Now the brand that I was using for the purple is a brand new purple that I got, so I wasn't used to the can. It didn't came, come with a cap, so that was very confusing. But I did love how he turned out later. And we'll be seeing him a little bit later. Well, right now, we're going to be moving on to the next dragon that we have. The next dragon horses with wings this time. And yes, I did sculpture her off camera because it would be too much. So, let's move on to the airbrush now. Now, I have used this airbrush on occasionally throughout some of my videos. If you have seen those previous videos, I have used it before. Um, I'm not the greatest with the airbrush, I will say. And, but I will say that this airbrush is really beginner friendly. I was able to oh. learn how to use it. I was able to learn, like, the, the, the do and not to do with a, um, that it was an airbrush. And the compactor that, that comes with it is rechargeable. So that's really good for someone who doesn't know what the heck they're doing with a freaking airbrush and an air compressor. Now, I will state something that I find a little bit irritating with airbrushes. Number one, you have to find like specific paints in order to put into the airbrush. That's the one thing I don't like. Number two, um, for some reason with mine, I don't know how everybody else has been like, um, I, like how they do like when they ever they airbrush theirs um my uh character turned out a bit sticky not too bad not too bad but it was a little bit sticky maybe i didn't allow it to dry maybe this is on me but i noticed that I, oh, with the airbrush i kind of like um touched my, the one that i did with spray can and i didn't feel any touchiness However, the art goes on to the airbrush. I didn't have to wear a mask, and I didn't have to go outside. The only thing I had to do was kind of cover my deck stuff to make sure paint don't get everywhere. It only got on my poster, but whatever. So why do I regret this? So after I was done spray, uh, airbrushing her and um, doing all that, I went ahead and added a little bit more detail with paint to both of these, and I have to say I absolutely love the paint job on them. Um, the, uh, I will say, mention something, the gloss that came with the kit, um, not my favorite. When I was trying to gloss over the eyes of the, the first sculpture, it keeps he taking off the paint. Maybe it was because of the paint that I was using, but I, I didn't want to touch, I, I had problem with the, um, gloss, personally for me. I don't know how everybody else has been handling the gloss, personally I've been having um problem with it now you would think that by by this time the video will be done no 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 no. i have a surprise at the end we're just gonna make it really brief because this video is already long than it is surprise motherfucker i'm making a diorama a diorama how brave of me i just watched like some videos on youtube to how to make it but I don't really have a whole lot of experience with diorama, so bear with me. I know this kit comes with a um, a base already that you can put your figurine on, but I really wanted to try this out. So I went ahead, bought like the like crap foam at Michael's, put it all together, and used this technique with uh, paper and like toilet paper and glue. Now the one thing I wish I did with the paper and glue is add paint to it, but other than that, I actually really like this method. And then I used like wood chip or the grass and mixed it all together because I wanted to use static grass, but there's no static grass that have like colors that, that I want for like magical world and all that stuff. It's always like greenery and all that stuff, so I don't know if Static Graph have like any other different type of colors in their um colors besides earthy tone colors. Also, I don't. Also, I didn't have a Static Graph machine, and I didn't want to spend too much money on a Static Graph, so I'm just gonna go with the basic. So after I finished the base, I added my characters, including one extra new character. This character is Nebula. You probably know her. She's my channel icon. 
and I got a little fox to represent her. And I also use a pocket scalp to bring in her wings and make her tail longer. But anyway, I'm just going to add her here right next to the other dragon horse and glue them all there. And they are officially done. Not really particularly happy with the diorama, but I am very happy with the sculptures of both the dragon horses. And I adore Nebula. Uh, this, hold on. There are a difference between spray cans and airbrush. Um, if you prefer airbrush, go for an airbrush. If you prefer spray can, uh, paint, go for it. Uh, honestly, with me, there's like um, the pros and cons between the two. Just go which one that you actually really like. I really enjoyed using these tools. I didn't use everything in the kit, but I hope that you guys found this video entertaining. And Jackie, if you're seeing this video, I hope you enjoy watching this craziness unfold and the craziness that I made of this video. I don't know where I'm going. I'm going to leave it out to the outro. See you later. Not as heavy as you think that this project would be. But yeah, I'm really happy how this project turned out. Still hopefully the wood chip for coming undone. I don't think I glued those on very well. <laughs> but overall, Generally okay. The sculptures on their own are my absolute favorite. The diorama, wish I did a little bit different with the diorama, but come on, this is my first diorama I actually have ever done in my lifetime, so give me a break. I'm actually gonna put this down because I actually am scared of knocking it down and destroying it. So I'm just gonna set it down real quick. And if you want to see the final look of it, I have posted up some image of it on my Instagram. If you want to go check out my Instagram, it links down in the description below to check out my Instagram page. I will be posting a photo of this piece. But anyway, guys, that will be it for me, guys. And I'm just going to go... I'm probably also going to be leaving the uh, kit down in the description below. Maybe it might still be available. Probably not by the time this video comes out. But you never know. I didn't expect another video like this for a long time. This project took a lot out of me. But anyway, that's going to be it for me, guys. I'm going to go back to my den before Christmas comes around. And I'll see you guys. See you. And I'll see you, dragons, next week. Bye, dragons. And honestly, I'm not really sure I want saving. I like to be my own.